It's a beautiful day outside. The birds are singing, the flowers are blooming, and on days like these, kids like you should be learning how I painted this sans mask. Hey gals and guys, I'm Hayes, this is Armand Brownies, and here is a blank of one of my sans masks that I sculpted in the last video. Here's a link. Do remember, if you like these masks, like my work, be sure to like, comment, and of course subscribe to the channel to support my content and I'll be making more of these. So just like our ki previous kindred masks, we're using plastic mesh to go in the eyes. It just needs to be cut to shape and this time glued in with contact adhesive, this Evo Stick Impact, which is one of my favourite glues in the world. It's fantastic for gluing flexible things to other flexible things. And then we need to paint the whole thing white. But something quite important is never want to paint something stark white very hard to get something to look good that is stark white because white is such a weak colour. Also, it's not a very natural colour. Here, because we are doing a bleached bone colour and also want to look a bit more natural, I'm adding a tiny, tiny little bit of burnt umber into there. So a little, little bit of yellowy brown, which will make it a slightly off-white beige colour. And then with a little bit of latex mixed into the paint so it's a touch flexible, slop it on over the entire head, making sure to get in all of the recesses and just base coat the whole mask takes a little while have to add a bit more water to the paint every now and then and a touch more latex each time but as you can see it goes over in a nice strong coat and we're using nice thick artist acrylic paint a little extra touch to make sure that the white color looks just right is actually I attack it with an airbrush putting on the same color of white with a little bit of the yellow in it over the whole thing which helps cover up some of the brush marks make the whole thing stronger more consistent color and having the base coat already put on means that it sticks quite nicely to the base mask especially since we're putting it on whilst the base coat is still a little bit wet that same yellow that we were using before to tint the white we're now just going to use to do our shading. Trying to avoid putting too much shading on the front of the face since I want that to be nice and white to be a bit more in line with the character model. We go around and actually in all of the big recesses in all of the parts which want to stand out we put a nice light layer of shading to highlight the skull parts and then later the cracks. We're just following along behind everything which brings out all of the details and also because of the colors being used actually makes it look a lot more skull like because now you can see how it blends really nicely with a slightly off white color of, at the base we want to make sure that this brown doesn't spill out too far over the rest of the mask, of the mask and make it look less natural but using an airbrush to put this paint on gives us a nice advantage on just making it look nice and natural anyway because airbrushes are basically magic Now, for the actual details on the front of the face and the recesses, I wanted to use actual black. So around the eyes, in the nose, between the teeth, I wanted to use actual black because that ties in a bit more with Sans himself and adds a bit of a stronger car contrast for those details and picks them out on the more naturalistic skull. So that's my biggest concession to the actual original character model. At this point, I add a couple of airbrush white dots into the eyes. And if you remember the mask from the start of the video, you'll know that that's not how those eyes were painted. Those eyes were done by hand by a paintbrush. So after I finished recording this, I decided that actually painting the pupils on by hand so they have a nice strong edge rather than using an airbrush so they have sort of powdery edges like they do in, in here, makes it look a lot better, a lot more characterful. But live and learn. Now, I, put, I start putting the black around the teeth, but unfortunately, because the teeth have some strong recesses around them, there's a lot of paint from the base coat that is still drying. And that kind of screws up my whole painting method. And the airbrush blows all of the undried paint from between the teeth, teeth out and just ruins any work you're doing. And I actually end up struggling to get the teeth painted in any meaningful way. And actually resort to doing it by paintbrush and then a little powdering of airbrush over the top which I then decide didn't look didn't look good and I repeat that process a couple of times and it was a bit of a blather mostly because I was trying to get this entire paint job done in one streaming session rather than sitting and waiting for it to dry sometime but there you go a full sand skull head and I hope you are as excited about how this came out as I am I'm thrilled with how skull like it looks but yet still has the cheeky character in the front of his rather creepy face. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to comment, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and also share it with any of your Undertale cosplaying friends. And hopefully, and hopefully in the next month or so, the Papyrus will show up. See you later.